I've been a chef for uh, 20 odd years, uh, working around the world and in the UK. And I've been furloughed since, since March. I wanted to do something for the community, my local community, which is Greenwich and Woolwich. I'm still getting a salary, even though it's paid by the government. A lot of people who are on da daily wages would probably not get anything. So uh, it's just a small way of giving back. As a chef, it's very exciting <laughs> because we come here in the morning and we never know what's there. There's about 40 odd kilos of broccoli. What we'll do is uh, we'll uh, blanch them and have them a little bit salted and buttered if possible. Uh, we'll make a nice stew with the venison that we have uh, using a, l a lot of potatoes, onions. We've got a lot of dry stuff, tin stuff. I know it doesn't sound nice, but I'm, I assure you it will taste delicious. So once we finish cooking, this is where they end up. Uh, the, the packs are already labeled. We freeze them so we have a bank of food that's ready to give anyone who needs it and who's vulnerable. We started here in March. Firstly, providing the shielding boxes. From then on, we've been pro providing food support for people shielding and for people in, in need as well. Everything is balanced nutritionally. We also include a menu planner so that people are able to um, plan their meals for the week. At the beginning of the pandemic, we were doing emergency deliveries on the same day as well. People just uh, maybe coming out of hospital, people desperate for food. It's really rewarding when people come and say, oh, thank you, you know, uh, you made our day or they've been struggling for money and you say, look, have you got anything for us? And you, most of the time, nine out of ten times, we always find something for them. You know, we had people come just randomly past our community and say, look, uh, have you got any food for us? And we always will find something. We always got something here. Thank you. I'm the manager of the Clockhouse Community Centre based in Woolwich Dockyard. With the outbreak of COVID-19, we decided that the centre would have to close to the public. We've got a fantastic resource in this building, a huge kitchen, a very well equipped modern kitchen, cafe, etc. So I wanted us to try to be part of some ongoing food distribution programme. We started on a very low-key, almost amateurish basis to begin with, just trying to provide food. Initially, our instinct was to keep it local in the immediate part of Woolwich, but we were getting requests from much further afield than that. So we now cover quite a large aspects of Greenwich Borough. We go to a whole host of different locations. Hello. How are you today? Oh, fine. Good, good, good. We've got the usual supply here for you, six or seven dishes, meat dishes, some bread, a couple of wee packets of sandwiches, etc. And if you need any more during the week, we'll always come back. Have a nice weekend. Yeah, you as well. Thank you. This is an area with quite high levels of social deprivation, lots of social housing, higher than normal proportions of people who may be claiming universal credit, quite a lot of single parents, approximately 30 plus percentage of people who don't have English as their first language, just a lot of statistics that showed to us there's a lot of need on our doorstep. I mean, they've quite helped me a lot because I'm on universal credit and I only get £217 a month. So the food bank has been a blessing. It's been a blessing, and especially with these ones, they are very nice to me. They are very nice, and I appreciate that. I really do. I really do, and I hope they can keep up their good work. I work with the HAS Centre as the outreach and um, 
and Development Coordinator. We support women who've been through domestic violence, especially around this time with uh, COVID-19. We found that a lot of uh, women who've been through domestic violence find themselves if they've moved out of the violence situation, they find themselves isolated. Sometimes I try to like make a meal. <laughs> so if I know, okay, I'm putting pasta, okay, I'm, what else would I need if I had pasta? I would need this and that and that. So I try to do that. But sometimes it's difficult depending on what you have because sometimes you don't have everything you need. Here we have the food packed for the clients that, um, that comes to um, the Migrant Hub. It's Lewisham Refugee and Migrant Network. We've got meat and we've got tomatoes and some canned soup and we've got some um, protein, high protein porridge as well. During the lockdown, it is um, very, very difficult for this set of people to get help because um, they can't really reach out to the government. They are, they are not qualified um, to get the benefits that is out there that the government uh, has laid down. Some of them are not even working. And those that are working, um, they, because of their, um, some of them, they have no recourse to public fund. Some of them are actually dying at home because they are too scared to reach out for help because of the immigration law. They are scared if they go to the hospital, they might be refused treatment. I've been coming here for food parcel. Oh, they have been helping to provide food for my family. Yeah, and it has been a, a very nice gesture. I, I appreciate them. Thank you. You're welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is for you. Thank you very much. You're I got three kids. I don't have the money to work, so I'm not permitted to work at this moment. So I'm getting my eating from here that they want supplying us food to eat. Without them, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to cope. Hello? People will become unemployed. I don't think there's any doubt about that in the weeks and months ahead. I think you'll get a swathe of the population who've never had to claim welfare benefits probably. It could be quite a shock to their system and they may struggle with that initially. There will be an ongoing need to help people in the community with food and other services in the time ahead.